Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a little look at how we solve quadratics uh, by factorising. So this tends to be on the um, non-calculator test because uh, it involves factorising so you don't need a calculator. If you were to solve quadratics uh, without factorising by using the quadratic formula or um, completing the square, that's probably more likely to be in a calculator paper. So let's get started. So why do we factorise and how do, how do we actually solve quadratics by factorising? So my first two examples here have already been factorised and this actually could come up in the foundation where they actually have um, something that has already been factorised. And how it works is it must always be equal to zero, which it is in this case, and I'll come on to why later on. Because at the minute I'm doing 4x times what's in the brackets here, which is x minus 5. So how we go around solving this is we say, okay, what does x need to be to make it 0? Because 0 times whatever's in here will always give me a 0. Likewise, I find out what x is in the brackets to make this 0, because then 0 times whatever that is will again give me the answer of 0. Okay, so that's all we're trying to do is find values of x that make 0. So the first one here, 4 times what gets 0? Well, x must be 0, because 4 times 0 is 0, and therefore this, which will be 0, times this will give me the solution of 0. So that's one solution. The other solution for this x here, so I ignore all that. What does x need to be to make this whole thing 0? You might already be able to spy it, but if you can't spy it, all you need to do is just go, OK, well, it's currently x minus 5. I need it to equal 0. And then you can just solve it by flowchart or by balance. I'm just going to use balance method for this, where I add 5 to both sides. So I have the solution of x equals 5. So if x is 0 or x equals 5, and I substitute into there, I will always get the answer of 0. So that's an example of it being factorised into a single bracket. What happens if we factorise it into a double bracket? Well, exactly the same thing. I need to find the solution for x that turns this bracket into 0. So that 0 times this one gets me 0. And I need to find the value for x in here that gets turns this bracket to 0. So 0 times that gets me 0. So exactly the same thing. This one's a little bit trickier. So again, we can just say, well, I've got my 3x plus 1. I need it to equal 0, that's what I need it to do. So then you can just use the balance method and solve it. So I'm going to minus 1 from both sides. If you need some help with how to solve using the balance method, you can look at uh, my solving equations video. And because of minus 1, we have minus 1 there. And then I divide by 3 to get rid of that 3 on that side. So x equals minus 1 over 3. So that's one solution, x is minus 1 over 3, and again, I need to do the same thing for this one, so I have x minus 2 equals 0, and we just rearrange it by adding 2 to both sides, so x equals 2, so I have two solutions. So just a, ref a refresher, this could be done in foundation, where they give you something to factorise, or they've already factorised it, it's equal to 0, and they say, what are the solutions, and that's how you do it, so each bracket equal to zero, rearrange it, or if it's a single bracket like that with x on the outside, it's going to be zero. So let's have a look at what it could be like in the higher, where it actually just gives you the quadratic equal to zero, and you need to uh, solve it. So as the uh, video suggests, we need to factorise it. So I'm going to ignore the zero for now. I'm just going to factorise this quadratic. So it's not a single bracket because I can't take anything out, so it's going to be a double bracket. So again, if you've forgotten how to factorise into double brackets, have a little look at my factorise in double brackets video. But just a little refresher here, so x squared always goes there, and we always put the number down here. x times x always gets me the x squared. Now I've got a different uh, combinations of numbers that will multiply to get 12. So 1 times 12, I could have 2 times 6, or I could have 3 times 4. And I need to pick the right one. And remember, we need to pick the combination that will add or subtract to get a 7, which is going to give me the 3 and the 4. So I'll put the 4 and the 3 in here. And if I do 4 times x, that'll be 4x. 
3 times x will give me 3x. But be careful, that's a minus 7x, in which case to get minus 7x, that needs to be minus 3 and minus 4. So when you simplify it, you get the minus 7x. So always check you got that. And if I change that to a minus 4x, that needs to be a minus 4. If I change that to minus 3x, that needs to be a minus 3. So I have x minus 3 in one bracket, x minus 4 in the other bracket, and I'm going to go back and say that's equal to 0. And then we're just like we did up here, set each bracket equal to 0, and then solve it. So x minus 3 equals 0, so plus 3 to both sides, and x equals 3. Same thing for this one, x minus 4 equals 0, plus 4 to both sides, so x equals 4. Now I said I'd come back to why we must be equal to 0. So if you were to sketch uh, this quadratic, you have this, okay? So x squared minus 7x plus 12 equals 0. The reason why it needs to be equal to 0 is because when it's equal to 0, the y value here is 0. Okay, so we're finding the values for x where y equals 0. And as you can see here, we have our solutions. It crosses the x-axis, so when y is 0, at 3, and the coordinates 4. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find out where does the quadratic cross the uh, x-axis, so when y is 0. Quick point, if the quadratic isn't equal to 0, you will need to rearrange it to make it equal to 0, otherwise this won't work. For that reason, it has to equal 0, so you can find out where it crosses uh, the x-axis. Okay, so let's have a look at another example. Exactly the same thing. Here's my quadratic. I'm going to factorise it. So my x squared goes in and my number x times x is x squared. I need numbers that multiply to get to 10, so I'm going to have 1 and 10, 2 times 5. Which am I going to use to get plus 7? Definitely going to be the 5 and the 2. So 5, 2. 5 times x, 5x. 2 times x, 2x. And if I simplify that, I already get 7x, which is positive, so that's fine. So after factorising it, we have x plus 5 in one bracket, x plus 2 in the other bracket, and that again equals 0. And it's the same process. Set these equal to 0, and then just solve them. So minus 5 to both sides. So x equals minus 5. Set this one equal to 0 minus 2 to both sides, and x equals minus 2. And again, if we're to show you the sketch of that, you can see exactly what happens when you draw it, because it's equal to 0, where uh, y is 0, we have our solutions where it crosses the x-axis at minus 5 and minus 2. So that's why it works. OK, two more examples to show you. Just bear with me while I change my uh, worksheets over. And the first one is this one here, x squared minus 36 equals 0. So this always confuses people because you can't actually factorise it into a single bracket because an x won't come out and a number won't come out. It is, in fact, a double bracket. So let's draw our grid. I'm going to put my x squared in like so, and I'm going to put my minus 36 in like so. But what we need to do is find two numbers that are the same, because essentially what we're after doing is an x squared plus 0x, because it doesn't exist, minus 36 equals 0. Okay? So, obviously, I'm still going to have my x times x to get the x squared, and I need numbers that multiply to get to 36. So I've got 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and then of course, you probably already guessed it, 6 times 6, okay, which is the one I'm going to use because the numbers are the same. So I'll have 6x and 6x, but at the minute, if you simplify them, I have 12x, 
So all you need to do is just make one of them negative. So 6x minus 6x gives me the 0x. They cancel each other out. And of course, that needs to be there. And what you'll notice with these types of questions is this number here will always be a square number for exactly that reason, because it's always going to be the pair of numbers that times together to get that. OK, so this will always be a square number. And then it's just the same thing as we've seen on the previous example. So I've got x minus 6, x plus 6 equals 0. I'll start with this one. x minus 6 equals 0, plus 6 to both sides. So x equals 6. And then I'll finish this one. You're probably already ahead of me of what's going to happen. But I'll just write it out anyway, just in case. Minus 6 to both sides and then x equals minus 6. So just a little bit of a heads up with that one there. And finally, uh, this one here, this won't be in foundation, but it could be in higher. Uh, again, I'm just going to factorise it, but a little refresher of how we factorise it when there's a coefficient in front of the x squared. We still set it up in exactly the same way with my 3x squared and my number like so, but a slight difference. Remember, we need to do 3 times 1, which gives me 3. I need numbers that multiply to get to 3. Luckily, there's only one combination, which is 1 and 3. And of course, that's the one I'm going to use to get minus 4x. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to have to have a minus 3x and a minus x. So that when I simplify these, I have minus 4x. Once we're at this stage, we can then factorise the top. So what's going to come out? Well, a 3 will definitely come out. And I've got an x squared and x, so an x will come out. And then 3x times what gets me 3x squared? That's going to be an x. 3x times what gets me minus 3x, minus 1. And x times what gets me minus x, minus 1. And don't forget to always check um, that when you times these two numbers, you actually get this number here. And of course, we do minus 1 times minus 1. A negative times a negative is a positive. So make sure you always check everything to make sure it works. And then, of course, because we've now done that, we can come down here and actually write it out. Again, equals 0. And then we can find our solutions by setting each bracket equal to 0 and then solving it. So in this case, plus 1 to both sides. So 3x equals 1. And then I divide by 3. So x is 1 third. And this one here, x minus 1 equals 0 plus 1 to both sides, so x equals 1. Okay, guys, so just a few examples there of how to solve quadratics via factorising. Make sure it's equal to 0. If it's not, rearrange it so it is, then factorise it, and then make sure each bracket uh, equal to 0 and solve it to find your solutions. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope it helps.